Today we're taking this Dr. Disrespect merch concept that I just made and I'm going to show you guys how to make color steps for screen printing using Filter Gallery Photoshop tutorial starting now. Right here in front of me I have the final composition for my Dr. Disrespect design and it's in a folder and although I'm not going to be designing this today I'm going to be focusing purely on separating the colors for screen printing. If you guys want to learn a lot about merch design and you're ready to take your merch design skills to the next level me and my friend Zach are dropping a course this this April and you guys do not want to miss it. It's going to be jam packed with information that you cannot find on this YouTube channel and you guys can sign up at a discounted price using the link in the description below. But even if you don't sign up guys, you have this channel for free. Okay. I'm here for you and I've always have been here for you. So anyway, um, we're taking the different tones of this image and turning them into different layers that can, we can add color to and later screen print or, um, we can even DTG print it if you want. So it's very versatile. So the way that works is we have our design group right here that's super magnified. Don't you love that? It's so cool. The cool thing about this method is once you have your design in a group like I do and you have your background color, which mine's a color fill so I can change it. Let me show you real quick. I can change it at any given moment, which is kind of cool. But all we need to do is select our group with our design that hosts our design and basically just press shift command option E. Now, if you're on a PC and you're not a Mac user like me, I get that not everybody is a Mac user. Um, you can press shift control alt E and it does the same exact thing. Okay. This is brilliant because we have our design on a black background merged onto its own separate layer, meaning we are not affecting our group which is great. So we can toggle this group off. We don't need it. We're going to be working with just the design today. So what we could do is we can name this whatever we want. But before we do that, let's go ahead and press command J or control J if you're on a PC and just do it four times. Okay. Once you have all four of those layers, you could start titling them. I'm going to name this one base layer or just base. This one will be our shadows pretty much. And this will be midtones. And this will be highlights and you can change these names um, whenever you want. Sometimes I just go one through four. So I'll start at the bottom and name it one, two, three, and four. It really depends on your preference. So we really only want to focus on one layer at a time. So we're going to start off naturally with our base layer since that is the first layer. So all you need to do is make sure, pay attention to your foreground and background color on the left side here. Make sure your foreground is black and your background is white. And then you're good to go. Now let's head up to filter, filter gallery. And this is where the magic happens. Now, I've experimented with a bunch of different things. I've even watched some videos um, from other designers experimenting, and I've tried everything, honestly. And what I found works the best is stamp and grain. Usually I use a stamp and a grain layer that's stacked on top of one another. Stamp will go first, grain will go second. And if you feel like it, you can always add a second grain layer and mess with the different grain types. I've tried regular, I've tried clumped, I've tried enlarged. It's no secret, honestly, like you could try any of them. It really depends on the photo I've realized because sometimes a photo will call for a regular grain type. Sometimes it looks better other ways. So you really want to experiment with that. This one, I'm probably going to use clumped. We'll see how we feel in a second. But again, we want to try it out. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's use regular. Two main things. The stamp is going to control the intensity of your grain, okay? And if we lower the light and darkness balance to the left, let's say, and go to a lower number, let's do like two, you could see that we actually introduce a lot more information, which is pretty cool, right? But the only problem with this is we introduce noise on the outside. So I like to raise the light and darkness balance until that noise disappears on the outside. I keep my smoothness around one or two. You can experiment with it. If you go up more, you can see that things are gonna start to look a little blotchy and kind of like merge together. I don't really like that. I like to have the detail in my image, so I'm gonna go one with this. Now when you go to grain, you're going to focus on intensity and contrast, so you wanna experiment with this as well. It's going to change image to image. I like to keep my uh, intensity a little lower, probably like 35, and then I raise my contrast a little bit more, and you do the same thing for the second grain type, which is clumped, and um, you just basically wanna mess with it and pay attention to all the details until you see something that you're happy with. So um, we're gonna take the contrast to the left, take it to the right and see if we can get rid of some of the outside noise that we have here. After messing with the settings, I finally arrived at something that I was happy with, which is a light and dark balance of five for the stamp and a smoothness of one. And then if we move down to our first grain type, which is on regular, we have that at a uh, intensity of 18 and a contrast of 71. And then let's go to our last grain type, which is on clumped. 
That's pretty important right here. This one is set to an intensity of 35. And lastly, the contrast is set to 37. And I think this looks pretty good. I'm really happy with it. So we're gonna press okay. Now that we have our base layer, we can trick the system a little bit because what's happening right now is we're actually losing quite a bit of detail in the dragon's body, which I do not want. And on the original, I did lose quite a bit of information. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate my shadow layer. We're just using it. So I'm holding an option. If you're on a PC, you can hold an alt. And we're just gonna name this um, our base number two or base two. And we're basically going to focus on just the body now. So I'm gonna go back up to filter, click on filter gallery. And this time we're only focusing on the body. I'm not concerned with anything else but the body of the dragon because we need that information there. So let's go ahead and try something real quick and see if we can try to get some more information back, even if it's not a ton of information. See, even this looks better right here. And we can even mess with the grain type a little bit more and see if we can get some more information. As you can see, this looks way better. That's what we want. So let's press okay on that. So we have base two and base one. And now if we wanted to, we can use base two to bring out more detail in base one, but I'm actually thinking base two would be a better base layer anyway. So we're just gonna toggle that off for now and keep it for later. We'll probably end up using that one. And now on shadows, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna go up to filter, filter gallery. I wanna take a quick mid video break to give a huge shout out to our sponsor over at Applique. Printing and selling your own merch online has never been easier. They provide amazing value to people that wanna start a clothing brand and get into the print on demand game. They make it easier than ever. No fees monthly. You can integrate them seamlessly with your e-commerce stores such as Shopify, which is one I use. This means you can start selling on your e-commerce platforms in minutes with zero upfront costs to you. And that is amazing because you could focus on things like marketing and actually figuring out what your brand's all about. So it takes the stress out of your life. Applique offers private labeling so you can step up your brand and make a name for yourself. Let me ask you a real question. Why spend more on monthly fees when you could just put those fees towards test prints at Applique? It's a no brainer guys. Check out Applique in the description below. Back to the video. So we have base two and base one. And now if we wanted to, we can use base two to bring out more detail in base one. But I'm actually thinking base two would be a better base layer anyway. So we're just going to toggle that off for now and keep it for later. We'll probably end up using that one. And now on shadows, we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to go up to filter, filter gallery. Now Photoshop remembers exactly what you did in the filter gallery. So all of our uh, previous settings are going to stay the same, which is great. And the only setting we need to change at this point is actually our light and dark balance under stamp. Now, this is how we're going to separate our tones. So all we have to do is use our light and dark balance slider and move it to the right just a little bit. And this, as you can see, is bringing out way more detail in our image. So this is going to act like another tone, if that makes sense. So this is going to be our shadow. So that's our shadow layer ready to go. And under mid-tones, we're doing the same exact thing. So we're gonna go filter gallery and we're going to play with the stamp light and darkness balance in order to get our mid-tone. Now that we have the last layer done, which is our shadows, we can move this slider over a little bit more to get our next tone. So all we need to do is take the light and darkness slider, move it over a little bit more. You can see the pattern, right? We're doing the same thing over and over again. So this is gonna be a little bit more intense. So we're gonna go 32, press okay. And now we're doing the same thing for our highlight layer. And what do you think we need to do? Pause for a second and tell me what you think we need to do. If you said go to stamp and raise the light and darkness balance, you are correct. Now let's just raise that light and darkness balance up a little bit more. And as you can see, we're getting more of the highlights. So we can raise that until we're happy. I always found with the highlight layer, it's best to have more information in the dragon. So we might need to actually create a duplicate copy of the highlights as well. So let's just do that real quick. Command J, or you could press Control J if you're on a PC. And let's create our main filter gallery layer for the highlights real quick. And then we'll do the same for that last layer and we'll try to merge them to get greater detail in our highlights. And it will make sense in a second. So I'm gonna go 46 maybe even 48 for this one. And then now with the second highlight copy, let's do the same thing, but this time let's try to get a little bit more information in the dragon. And remember, we only have stamp and two grains, and you can even just use one grain if you feel like it. I experiment all the time with both, but this way we can actually adjust the grains now in order to get more detail into the body of the dragon. So I'm just going to play with these different settings until some of the detail in the dragon actually shows up. What I will probably do for this one is move the light and darkness balance uh, over to the left a little bit until I see some of the dragon's details in the body and the tail start to show through. See, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna press okay on that and that will be our new highlight layer. Now all we have to do is add a layer mask to our top copy 
and then invert it. So Command I or Control I if you're on a PC. We have an inverted layer mask, which is a black background now. So that means we need to paint white in order to reveal whatever that mask is hiding, if that makes sense. And we're gonna use a pencil for this. And the reason why is because the pencil has sharper pixels versus the brush. So we are going to use a hard round pencil brush in order to make this work. So we are going to use a hard round pencil for this to have a sharper edge basically. And we're gonna be painting with white. So now check this out. If I start to just paint over this, you can see some of those highlights reveal themselves with that current mask that we have. So what we're doing is revealing all of the detail in highlights copy that we hid with that layer mask in order to reveal it in the areas that we wanna reveal it in. I really only do this in some parts. You don't wanna to go too crazy with this effect or anything like that, but like where Doc's face is, I definitely want a little bit more highlights in there. So this is going to be our new highlight layer. So all I have to do is merge both layers together now. So I'm gonna right click on them and merge them. And now we're just gonna name this highlight. Now at this point, all we have to do is delete the background out of each layer. So we're gonna do that real quick using the magic wand tool. While selecting the magic wand tool, all you have to do is make sure contiguous is unchecked and left click on the black background and just press delete on your keyboard and that will delete it. And you do the same thing for every color. Once you're finished deleting the backgrounds with the magic wand tool, all you have to do is select each layer and add a color overlay. So let's try that real quick. We're actually gonna use this base two to start and see where that takes us. So under base two, which is our new base layer that we created before, we're just gonna go down to our layer styles, which is the FX icon right here, which is found right below the layers palette. You can click on that and then you wanna go to color overlay. And we wanna make sure this is like more of a red color. Let's just go super like vibrant red, press okay. And that's our first color for our base layer, okay? Now we're gonna go shadows, which in reality really isn't our shadows. We can just go down to effects and add a color overlay this way, or we could just hold an option or alt and we could just click and drag it to our shadow layer and it's going to copy that red. And now we have that layer style that we can click on and change the color of really quick. So this is going to be our second layer and this will, I guess, act like our shadow layer. And this is kind of up to you what color you wanna go with. And now we're gonna do the same thing for midtones. We're just gonna copy this over and then change the color to something else. So let's go more of a lighter, maybe like more of a tan color. And this is what you're left with, my friends. You have a full color separation and you can get so many different looks by just playing with those grain settings in the stamp and it's fully customizable. But the beauty of this all is if I hide my background layer, these are all transparent layers. You should have no problem burning these uh, layers into screens for screen printing. And if you turn them all on, you can see that each color has its own layer and it's transparent, perfectly transparent, which means, that, like I said, it's just gonna print amazing. So let's turn that background layer back on. And again, all these colors can be customized to your liking. So if you don't like this yellowish color, we can change it. Let's say we want it poppier or maybe we want more of a blue. You could do that, which is really cool, you know? It's just really easy to customize this way. And I've been really uh, loving this method of color separating. So this is the final. And although I can't admit that the wings definitely need more highlights, I still think it looks cool. And I think most of you will probably agree that it's just a cool effect in general. And now you have a new skill that you can add to your tool belt and use on your own designs.